but what's going on guys it's your boy sister with a video here today bringing us a brand new video how to create your very own cool manipulated thumbnails that you guys see a lot of my social medias where i do like speed arts and stuff like that where they get super well received so i thought hey let me just give you guys some of the tips and tricks and hopefully that you guys can make some of yourselves i just use warzone as an example for today's video but all the tips and tricks realistically are going to help you whatever kind of method you end up doing and or excuse me game or context you end up doing so hopefully you guys learn something have a little bit of fun with it and uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. If you guys are not subbed yet, please uh, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, comment down anything you wanna see me do. And uh, that's all, that's all I got. Love you guys, enjoy the video, peace. All right guys, so first is knowing how to blend a person or an object with a different lighting in a scene that's dramatically different. And it's actually super simple, really. All you have to do is open up a new curve adjustment and clearly mask it to the person or the object. Then, while holding Alt on your keyboard, you wanna select the word Auto and make sure that the half circle icon is also selected on your curves layer. Then a table should pop up and you want to select fine dark and light colors. Then it is super easy from here, you want to click on the shadow color and select the darkest portion of the landscape or the background with the eyedropper tool that it gives you. Then do the same exact thing with the highlights and choose the best highlight color that you see which should be a lot brighter than the actual shadow color. And then a yes or no table should pop up and just say no. And it is quick as that if you want to of course use the highlights and shadows and change the S curves on your curve you can still do that as regular. Now your object should be a lot closer if not perfectly matched in the atmosphere around it. Next quick tip for you guys is actually knowing the tool blend if. Now when using stock images like smokes or sparks, sometimes the linear dodge add or overlay blend modes take the realism out of the stock when placing it in the actual design. So using blend if to take out blacks and white values is sometimes the most preferred method. Simply double click the layer to open up the layer options and on the landing page the blend if option should be near the bottom. All you'd have to do now is actually move the left or right anchor depending if you want to alter the whites or the dark values and will then erase the values of light while you move the anchor pretty much taking out whatever value of white to black that you end up landing on. And then if you guys hold alt on your actual anchor point, it'll split the anchor and will give you a softer transition when actually going through the values. Makes it really easy for smoke textures and other stocks to be blended the way you like. Now, pretty much the last two tips are really nice quick lighting tips. Now, one I pretty much use all the time and it's really widely known, but you're watching so you might not know. However, for me, adding glows in the background or to someone's eyes can be exactly what a design needs. Just take a color of your choice and click on the canvas with a nice soft brush, then change your blend mode to linear dodge add, and it's pretty much that easy. However, not many people try to tweak beyond this point, so I always say to be sure to press Ctrl U on your keyboard on the actual layer to open up the hue and saturation table. And then of course you want to move all the settings, especially the hue and the lightness, just to make sure if you can see if you get a lot better look or better blend than what you would have just leaving it as is. And lastly, using a hue and saturation with the colorize option in order to actually find the perfect highlight color is one of my favorite ways to actually add highlights to other objects or people. Finding your color then utilizing the layer mask in order to actually add or delete the highlights using your brush, black to erase, white to fill in, helping a lot making it easier to create highlights without switching back and forth between the actual eraser and your brush. All right, so let's get this thing going right here right now. So I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna definitely do is I'm gonna take Courage and I'm gonna throw on the filter, camera raw filter, and make sure I fix the blur that's going on on his camera. So a lot of you guys might have like not HD cameras. This is pretty much HD, but however, it wasn't in focus and seems probably in motion, right? So look, one of the things I like to do immediately is taking the actual clarity under basic, right? And putting this up. Also before and after is this little thing right here, by the way. Um, fix it, please. Oh God, what? There it is. Okay, so clarity, right? I'm gonna put the clarity up to about like 40 to 50 per, uh, 50 plus or whatever is pretty good. I'm gonna get rid of basic for a second, but I'm also gonna use detail. Detail is sharpening, so I'm gonna take the sharpening, put this up quite a lot, not too much where it's like too grainy like this, but just something around here where you can see if I zoom in for a second, right? You see his eyes, they're definitely a lot more sharper. It looks like a completely new and better in HD photo. So pretty solid there. So one of the also things I like to do a lot is taking the actual texture and putting this up quite literally almost to 100%. It adds this really cool sort of dramatic feeling, which just for me and the Courage's thumbnails looks pretty freaking solid and not that many people do it. So if you guys want to start jumping on that train, hype, that little, you know, trending train or hype, whatever, right? I mean, it looks pretty cool. You can't lie and say this doesn't look pretty cool, right? Without the clarity, this is what it looks like or uh, texture. And with the clarity, this is what it looks like. Pretty solid in my opinion. Press OK though. So. Now I actually fixed the actual uh, picture itself. I'm gonna go ahead and just put on this sort of like curve here. We're gonna make sure clip mass is curve. And you guys already saw how I did this, but if I click on this little half circle, hold alt, take the word auto, right? We're gonna go to find dark and light colors, take the shadow, we're gonna choose the darkest color in the actual canvas, right? Then we're gonna choose the highlights, and we're gonna choose the highlight color uh, in this canvas, is which I'm pretty much gonna say is this little pole here. So I'm gonna press that, and you can see right off the bat looks pretty, that's pretty solid. I'm gonna say no as well. Right, I'm gonna take a nice little S curve to this as well to make sure the highlights and shadows are nice and more defined. 
Yep, just like that. You can see how, like, come on, you can't tell, like, you probably were just like, how do you do it? It's that simple to make it look like there's something inside the canvas. So I'm gonna take this now curve. I'm gonna take this here. And also you can, see, you can see my fill, right? So what fill is, if I just kind of like, you know, quickly pressed with a black to uh, erase, is my, why is my thing not working? Jeez, right? You can kind of see how super aggressive this is and how much like pigment is being added. So what fill basically is, is how much your paint brush is being loaded with paint, right? So at 100%, your paintbrush is at 100% load, right? But if you take the fill, or not fill, not fill, flow, right? And take this down to like 25% or so, you're gonna see if I do this now, erasing it, it has a lot more control and it's basically like putting less paint, but just like if you wanna do a little bit more, you just basically have to go over and over and over a few times, right? Not really opacity, but just how much feathering is being uh, added in my opinions, right? So definitely messing around with your fill when doing manipulation is, you know, A1, right? So I like to go for the 25% when I'm doing things like this. And if I'm doing like anything like um, highlights and stuff like that too, I'll take the flow and put it down as well. So now my little eyes, kind of eye pockets are there. The reason why I did that is I'm gonna add this glow to his eyes. So I'm gonna take this, let's take a nice, uh, so right here, the flow's not gonna work, right? If I click a few times, you can see the paint brush isn't really loaded. But if I take over here at 100%, if I click over here twice, you can see it's super loaded. So I'm gonna make sure I click with a nice, you know, full 100% uh, flow brush. Take this linear dodge add, and you can see now it looks pretty cool. So if we didn't cut out his eyes there, it would just basically look like this, right? And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for more of an intense feel, intense look, and we got that with those little eyes right there. So. <clears throat> what I, oh, I also want to show you guys this. I don't show this very often, but filter, and if you guys use liquify, I know a lot of you guys use liquify, right? And you guys use this first tool right here, which is kind of like squeezing their cheeks around or whatever, or like messing around with their eyeballs, or using like a the bloat tool to mess around with their eyeballs, right? To make it a little more bigger, right? All that stuff. You guys do know that there is a literal face tool, right? And you wanna, if you want to make someone like a little more chubby, right? Or they want to add a few pounds, you know, his forehead, maybe his, his hairline's receding, right? Um, you can do that stuff. It's just pretty freaking cool because I don't really see that many people do it that often, but I definitely did it in the other, when I did this thumbnail for Courage the first time, I definitely took his cheeks here and pushed them in to give it more of that like, kind of like scream uh, painting photo, right? That makes his cheeks look like he's almost like, you know, transforming and like really scared and whatnot. So I gave that resemblance there, right? <laughs> That's so weird. But yeah, you guys can have a lot of fun with this. You also make their eyes bigger. It's basically you can take eyebrows, nose, mouth as well. You can kind of see if I want to take this mouth, you know, make it, you know, more wide or making more of like an O, something like, oh, like scared. So these things are a thing. You can mess around with these tools over here, but I, I'm too scared of that kind of stuff. I like to just move it like this over here and we're good to go. So I'm gonna press OK. Now that looks like that, looks pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna take this now. I'm gonna go into the zombie here. I'm gonna put the zombie in the foreground here. No, not clip masked. Foreground. <clears throat> I'm also gonna put the same exact curve that I put on Courage on the same exact zombie because it'll it'll work, right? Hold Alt, take this, clip mask this to the zombie, right click, clip mask, or just hold Alt and click in between, right? Then I can take this, right? Fill that in with all pure white so I reset the actual, so I reset the, uh, how do you say, clip mask. Then I'll take this, go over here, and use a black to erase these eyes back out so the glow is still there. You can see on this zombie here that this is sort of like this little glows in his chest. So I'm gonna take this and do the same exact thing, right? Just like so. Boom. Nice little glows, so it kind of still accentuates and it's still there. And just like that, the zombie now looks like it's completely inside the picture. And then putting them in the foreground, you can see Courage is in between two zombies now on this right hand side. It makes Courage even look more like he's in the actual canvas. So, super W there. I'm gonna take this now. All these little final things I'm gonna do is one is gonna be the smoke for one for sure. Right with the smoke, I'm not gonna use blend if, but I'm gonna use color uh, linear dodge add for this one. Then I'm gonna take a nice layer mask by clicking this right here. Take a nice black brush, right? Take my flow, lower this down like 20 to 25%, and take it and just erase a few spots so it's not super heavy with the smoke, right? I'm gonna take another copy of this smoke, put it above everything, right? Take this, do the same exact thing, but I'm actually gonna delete it all, and then I'm gonna take a white brush to fill it all back in, right? And I'm just gonna do a little bit, not too heavy, so I'm gonna take this uh, fill, lower this down a bit, just to kind of give it just a little bit more of like a, that sort of like, again, circling things around the actual objects, make it all look like it's in one picture, right? So I'm gonna take this, we're gonna use a nice new layer right below Courage or behind Courage, and I'm gonna take a nice orange, right? I'm gonna say, this is pretty good, I'm gonna kind of just click around, make a nice big kind of burst behind them. This can be like fire or whatever, but I wanna say it's, it doesn't really matter what it is in this case. Uh, I'm gonna take the smoke though, and kind of put this, make sure I erase that just a little bit over here, because it's a little bit heavy. Right, there we go. Now this linear dodge add looks pretty good, but I'm gonna take the control U on my keyboard for the hue and saturation table, move this around a little bit so I can get a, a better orange. 
And I think right around there is pretty solid. Okay. Do I, am I a fan of that? I think I'm a fan of that. I'll do another orange hit, right? And then another linear dodge add just to see if it looks pretty good there. Almost like adding a little more of intense light. That's, that's more like it in my opinion. Okay. I'm okay with that. So with this now, I'm actually going to take another uh, hue and saturation, right? Hue and saturation right here. Take the color eyes, put this up, put the saturation up as well. Take the hue, move it towards an orange, right? Then I'm going to clip mask this to the actual courage picture. I'm going to delete it, the, the layer mask, make it pure black by holding alt backspace, right? Then I can go here with a nice black brush or white brush, excuse me, to fill in. And I think, so I think this first one here needs to be a little more orange. So I'm going to press control U and make it sure it's a little more orange. Right. Okay. Boom. Then I'll go back to the situation. You can see if I just add this simple little sort of like brush, there we go. Uh, the flow is also at 22%, right? I'm going to add this simple little kind of halo light going around him only on the edge, nothing going on in, on this side here, because realistically the light's only going to be showing if there's a light purely behind me, you would only basically see this nice, simple little like silhouette of light going around me on the edge of my person or objects, right? Um, or if there was like another, you, you'd basically kind of like, no, you would have to know some sort of idea of like how light and lighting would work but if it's only going to be in this case i'm going to put it right on the edges here it's pretty safe right it feels like an object like a how do you say oh if you guys watch my episode number two right of uh redesigning your projects i did a nice simple lighting technique there as well you can kind of see what i was talking about there but i can't really explain it right here but you know just doing something like this right definitely around his ear will look really good as well not too heavy there you can kind of see just makes it look nice all right and then right there all right cool now if i want to take this put on linear dodge add i could but linear dodge has a, a bit much you realistically you're, you're pretty set here if you want to make it a little more lighter you just take the lightness and put it up saturation put it up as well but i think that's pretty solid right there so with this you can do all that kind of stuff as well on this like character not character but zombie here as well but i'm not going to really do it but i'm also going to say yo this glow is a little bit too much so yeah, right about there is pretty good intensity. So I'm gonna put these last few things. So the stock right here is a nice little simple spark, right? This spark here, I am gonna use blend if. Take this, double click, hold alt, take this layer, boom, move it over to the right, kinda gets rid of it, makes it look pretty good. That's pretty solid there. And then I'm gonna use another spark right here. Take this one, and this will be linear dodge add, linear dodge add, right? I'm gonna take a nice simple layer mask right here and erase a few spots so there's not so much going on around his face, right? That's pretty solid. Okay. I also have this picture over here, which is the Warzone logo, because just for whatever reference, if you have text, of course, this is where you put your text in as well. But right there is pretty solid. I'm actually going to leave this to last. You'll see why in a second. But now that I have this stuff in here, we're pretty much done. Besides the whole grid I could do at the end as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control, Alt, Shift, and E on my top layer. What that'll do is I can just basically merge everything into one single group layer. I'm gonna take the camera roll filter before I do that, rasterize or smart object. So filter, and in this filter, I'm going to actually go ahead and just use the before and after. I'm gonna put the highlights up, contrast up a bit, shadows definitely up a little bit as well. The whites, make sure those glows are pretty good. The blacks lower down a little bit. A little more texture is never gonna hurt. Clarity is never gonna really hurt too much, right? And I'm definitely gonna go into where it says color grading. I like to take a green shadow, move it toward this middle portion here. Highlights, same exact thing. Move it towards this portion here. Um, blending, we'll take it more towards this area here. And also optics, which is pretty cool. That's why I didn't put my text in just yet. But if I take the optics, you can see if I move it towards the right, it moves it kind of zoomed out. But if I move it towards the left, it'll zoom it in and give this really cool focus, not too heavily, right? Not, that's just absurd. But if you go towards like anywhere below negative 10 is a pretty solid choice. So I'm gonna say negative eight, and it kind of just puts more emphasis on the middle subject. If, if you, of course, put them in the middle or the person or your person right in the middle, looks pretty solid there. I'm also gonna go ahead and just do some color mix stuff, right? A little bit of a uh, more saturation here, a little bit of orange and red tones here, fix that there, right? All this kind of stuff. And I'm gonna say this is pretty solid right around there. Okay, I'm gonna press okay, right? And just like that, Looks pretty solid. I'm gonna put this Warzone picture in here now. At this point, we're kind of safe to put it in there. If I wanna put a little bit of a drop shadow, I could. I'm not gonna use a pure black, however. I'm gonna take this sort uh, the darker color that I see around, right? Then I'll lower it down a little bit. Spread, put it down. Put this, I'll make it a little bit darker, not pure black though. And then just say a little bit of a nice drop shadow if you wanna do a nice drop shadow with a nice white. And uh, ta-da!
right? So it's actually super, super simple. It's exactly the same exact scenario that I did for myself when I was doing it for Courage, actually. So you can see, of course, I can go a little bit more in, mess around with the shadows a little bit more, make it a little more lighter. If you want to go ahead and do that, you definitely can. But something like sparks, smokes, a uh, barbed wire, like a fence or a car, if you put them in the foreground, right, and then blur them, it's basically saying you're looking over it or past it, right, because it's so in your face, right? If they like, put your hand to your face and you're looking at, like, I'm looking at you guys, right, you'll see you guys in focus and my hand's blurred, it's because it's very close. So you put those objects in the foreground and blur them probably like to, to 15 to 20% blur, um, it'll look pretty freaking solid and it'll give you more and more and more and build more and more and more. But for me, I'm going to leave it right here, but you can see exactly this kind of idea. This is the exact idea, the exact kind of like idea when I go into these projects and it's not super hard. And, uh, yeah, with that being said, I'm done with today's video here today. So I know you guys are looking for this video. It's not difficult. It really isn't. You just have to have a, of course, have a good idea. And if, if you have a good idea, if you just know how to use the curves, do a little bit of like a lighting adjustments, right? And a little bit of glows and now in like little smokes and flares, you're solid. You can be, you can do exactly what I do. It's not too hard. So yeah, with that being said, I'll tell you guys later. Seso HQ out. Now I'm going to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking with guys later. Much love, peace, and hope you guys enjoy.